Okay guys, today what I want to talk to you about is your specific immunity. So we talked about um, leukocytes, the white blood cells, and if you remember I told you that you got these guys here, and these guys are there when you're born, right? So you're born with some white blood cells, and again, these guys are kind of like the sons of anarchy, they'll kill anything. And then you got the lymphocytes which need to be programmed to kill. Meaning they gotta come in contact with the specific antigen or pathogen that they're programmed to kill in order for you to develop some immunity. So if you look at these different types of lymphocytes, T cells, B cells, and NK cells, by the way, NK cells, that's like the coolest name for a cell ever, natural killer cells. Um, basically what they do is they um, destroy um, your own cells that are acting goofy and making goofy proteins and they usually have you can identify them under a microscope because they have uh, tattoos and um, they drive a Harley soft tail most days anyways what I really want to talk to you about is uh, the B cells and the B cells and T cells are lymphocytes and again they have to be programmed. So I made this really kind of real uh, rudimentary drawing. So floating around your blood and lymph, you have millions and millions of different B cells and T cells. And what makes them different is the receptors that are embedded in their cell membrane. And imagine if you went to a party where there's a thousand people and you were invited to this party, but you only know one person. So what are you going to do? You're going to park your car, you're going to get in, you're going to go to the bar, you're going to grab a couple of daddy pops, suck them down, and then you're going to look for that one person that you know. So what these different B cells do is they float around in your blood and lymph. They're called naive B cells because they're just, they don't know anybody until they meet somebody, right? So they're gonna be floating around in your blood and your lymph and they're looking for that one person they know and they're gonna ignore everybody else. And what determines that one person that they know is whether or not the receptors embedded in that particular B cell match up with the receptors that are embedded in that virus or that bacteria. So let me give you an example. Here's a bunch of pathogens, right? You got staph, you got strep, then you got the flu. So you got different bacteria and viruses. Those are the two most common that you're gonna be exposed to. And in the advanced class, I'll kind of explain the difference between viruses and bacteria and you'll also learn that in microbiology. But what I want to do is just kind of explain to you the specific immunity and how you develop that. So as you can see, these guys have different receptors. So not every B cell is going to be able to interact with them. So let's say that somebody's got the flu and they hack a loogie on you, and now you've been exposed to the flu virus. So that flu virus is going to be floating around, say in your respiratory tract because you sucked it in, right? And B cells are going to come in contact with it. And these B cells are going to bounce around until the one B cell that matches up receptors is going to come in contact with it. So as you can see, I made these receptors on these different B cells different. And as you can see, this particular B cell right here this one is the only one that's going to match up receptors. Now, when that particular B cell comes in contact with that flu virus, it's going to get turned on. And when it, that B cell comes in contact with that specific receptor, and there the receptors that are embedded in this particular B cell's membrane match up, that B cell is going to get turned on and it's going to divide into two types of cells. It's going to divide into plasma cells with a missing little receptor here that I'll add. And it's going to divide into memory cells. Now, 
you can kind of figure out what memory cells do. They remember what you were exposed to. Now, before you came in contact with this particular flu strain, this particular flu virus, you didn't have any B cells were, that were sensitized. Now you do. It's the plasma cells and the memory cells that we want to talk to you about. So once they're formed, because you came in contact with this flu virus, right, once they're formed, the plasma cells will begin to secrete antibodies. And these antibodies are proteins. And they're going to float around in the blood and lymph, and they're going to find that particular flu virus. And then those antibodies are going to bind to the receptors. And basically what those antibodies do is they mark this flu virus for death. right? They say, hey, this is the guy you got to get rid of. Then a monocyte, a white blood cell, right? A son of anarchy. They come in, they swoop in, and they phagocytize it. They gobble it up and destroy it. Now, here's the problem with that. This is the important piece. On your first exposure to the flu virus, this process takes several weeks and in the meantime the flu virus can infect your cells and you get sick and that's bad for you you don't want that right so what do you do well you go to Walgreens and they give you a flu shot and what they're giving you is basically three or four different strains of the most prevalent flu virus that is around and what how they determine that is they look at what's affecting South America because the flu virus typically travels from South America to North America so they look at the three or four most common strains of flu virus that are affecting the population in South America and that's what they base the flu virus on for that particular year now Watch, if you go to Walgreens and you get a flu shot, your immune system doesn't know that you went to Walgreens. All it knows is that you have this flu virus that is dead or attenuated, so it can infect your cells. So you can't get the flu virus or the flu from the flu shot, right? You can get the flu from the flu virus if somebody hacks a loogie on you. But the process is the same. So let's say, for example, you go to Walgreens and you get the flu shot injected into you, right? Boom. Now, the B cell with the specific receptor is going to match it up. When it matches it up, it gets turned on and divides into plasma cells and memory cells. What are those memory cells going to do and plasma cells? What are the plasma cells going to do? They're going to secrete antibodies. Not a lot, though, but you don't have to worry because you're not going to get sick by getting the flu shot. And they're going to search around for that flu shot that you got at Walgreens, mark it for death, and then the monocyte comes in and eats it up. But this is the good news. What you have made is you have made these memory cells. And what these memory cells do is obviously they remember. So if you're exposed, somebody hacks a loogie on you now, but you went and got the flu shot, right? And now you've been exposed to the flu virus because somebody hacked a loogie on you, then these memory cells are going to remember it and they're going to take away the receptor too, right? So the memory cell is going to come in contact with that receptor on that flu virus. And the memory cell then divides into thousands and thousands and thousands of plasma cells. So instead of making on your first exposure, I'm making this up, you make 10 antibodies. And it takes a couple of weeks to do that. On your second exposure, you make 10 million antibodies. And again, I'm making this stuff up just to give you an idea. So 
on your second exposure once you have sensitized these naive B cells now you have these plasma cells and memory cells and these memory cells remember what you were exposed to and instead of it taking weeks to make a few antibodies it takes hours or days to make gazillions of antibodies and these antibodies are going to do the same thing they're going to circulate around they're going to find that flu virus they're going to mark it for death and the monocytes come in and attack it and destroy it before it can infect your cells before it can infect your cells so when you get a vaccine what the vaccine is is a dead or attenuated virus or bacteria of what causes the disease but the immune system's response is the same it's to build up those memory cells so if you're exposed to it the real deal then those memory cells divide quickly into many many more plasma cells and you secrete many times more antibiotic uh, antibodies quickly and it will attack it and destroy it before it can infect your cells so that's how a vaccine works with regard to specific immunity and the reason you got to get the flu shot every year is because the strain of flu differs each flu season the hepatitis virus does not mutate as readily as the flu virus does that's why once you've been given the hepatitis vaccine you should be immune to it for life and just a couple of clinical things here sometimes especially if you're going in a nursing program one of the things you have to have checked is um, your uh, immunity to hepatitis measles mumps and rubella and chickenpox so what you do is if you say hey look I, I got vaccinated against this stuff and they go well you know show us and well I don't know where my records are so what they'll do is they'll draw blood and what they'll do is they'll draw what's called a titer and a titer actually measures antibodies in the blood and they can determine based on the antibody levels if you have been vaccinated now if you have never been exposed to it never vaccinated you won't have any antibodies to it if you have been then you'll always have a certain amount of circulating antibodies if you're exposed to something you'll simply get more because the memory cells will be activated so that's how a vaccine works in terms of preventing uh, disease. I hope that helped.